Hello again. Welcome to Skyrim. So, I guess the first question is, why Skyrim? Why not Fallout 4 or Oblivion? Yep, totally Oblivion. Or Morrowind. Or whatever Elder Scrolls game is the preference of the view. Well, a couple of reasons, actually. Firstly, the up-and-coming Legendary Special Edition will likely bring a whole new group of players into the vault. Secondly, I want to talk about Elder Scrolls Online and how it differs from its source material. And mainly, I wanted an excuse to play it again because it's really effective. By the amount of hours I've clocked into this game, you can already tell that I give this game the Harriet Skelly skill of approval. But I wouldn't say as a whole that it's a full 10 out of 10 for me. I'll go over the downsides later. But of course, the amount of hours I've put into this, even before I connected it to Steam, can say at least one thing truthfully about this game. It is actually massive. I still haven't done everything that there is to be done, and my friend with an even higher hour count still plays from time to time. From dragons to magic to swords and shields, this game is jam-packed full of ancient legends, even older evils, and books. So many goddamn books. Then, on top of that, you can create your own story. You can be any race with any combat focus, from archer to warrior, rogue to mage, naked hobo to sight. The main attraction of the Elder Souls games has always been exactly that. How big it is, yet how epic you feel playing it. So, what's different about it to the other Elder Scrolls games? Dragons. The selling point of a Skyrim was dragons. Dragon Shouts and being the Dovahkin. Which is fair. I mean, what's Dungeons and Dragons without dragons? Yes, just dungeons. That was the answer. However, in saying that, what's the difference between Skyrim, Oblivion, the rest of the Elder Scrolls series, and Elder Scrolls Online? Well, basically everything. Let me just say, I didn't even want to install ESO, even footage. I've played it on and off during that going to free subscription business, but I did not enjoy it. Sure, you have some Elder Scrolls ideas, different schools of magic, great and terrible demons, swords and shields, but ultimately, it falls short. You never get the same enjoyment out of it. You don't feel like this epic, badass chosen one. You don't get to conquer the great evil all by a lonesome. You don't even get the satisfaction of leaving your enemies laying as corpses right where they thought they could challenge you. Of course, that being said, I haven't enjoyed an MMO since Wrath of the Lich King, so if you like MMOs, you might enjoy it. However, I would really recommend that you also play the previous Elder Scrolls games, just so you know what you're missing out on. Come, my champion. When it comes down to the wire, Skyrim is only as fun as you want it to be. You hold all the choice in your hand. That's what makes the Elder Scrolls and Fallout franchises so compelling. I guess that's why ESO never really did it for me. But as I said earlier, Skyrim, hell, even the previous Elder Scrolls or Fallout games were never 10 out of 10. Despite being fun and in-depth, there are moments where it just fails to engage, from game crashing and general coding bugs, to emergence breaking voice acting and some poor development choices. I created a new character to do a playthrough for this review. Her name is Helga. Yeah. I also did something I don't normally do. I added a bunch of mods. Mainly graphical ones, plus the traits, and some sweet hairstyles. I guess they're probably the reason I can't access it save anymore. I'm not going to review the entire modding community, but I will say if they had their way, Skyrim would only be grimy dirty guys and naked anime girls. Of course, in doing so, I noticed some things I didn't before. Like torches. They have a limited lifespan. Never needed to worry about lighting before. Pretty sure I'd been playing on the default settings, yet I'd never needed torches, nor the alteration light spells. Obviously they wanted light to be a thing, otherwise they never would have coded these things in. But it wasn't until I had to fight Draugr in the dark that this became a big deal. Where the hell do you even buy torches? Not here. Not here. Definitely not here. 
I'm not trying to tell Bugthesda how to do their jobs. They did a lot with what they had. They made a humongous game, and things not quite meshing as expected like that. And I'm certainly not complaining about any crashing that happened post-mod installation, because that's my own fault. But if we don't complain about these things then, in the next Elder Scrolls games, we'll see the same communication failure between the different coding departments. And we'll all get RSI from spamming the quick save key. Crap, 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 crap! So yeah, Skyrim leaves me with mixed feelings, but I give it a rating of 9 out of 10. Still, if I ever make a list of games that I think everyone should have played at least once, Skyrim would be on it, at least as part of the Elder Scrolls games as a whole. I still had a lot more I wanted to say about Skyrim, because it's a game that leaves a lasting impression. Yeah, I think I've covered everything without delving deep into story and character choices. I'll let you play the game before I go into that. I probably won't stream Skyrim, not just because my net is bad, you can see how it went last time, but also, it's more something that you should experience yourself than just watching. Do stay tuned for my other streams, though, once I sort out the general badness, and for my other gameplay videos, and more reviews, just like this one. Bye bye!